Hi everyone! Today we're going to look at the Five Nights at Freddy's video games. These are more horror games based on cute creatures gone bad. In fact, this is probably the original game in this genre, since the first game came out way back in 2014. So let's find out just how scary and violent these games are, and whether they're okay for your kids. Again, just a reminder that I'm not the final authority on this topic. I'm just here to provide you with an overview of what these games are about so you can make your own decisions. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel if you like these videos. So let's start with a bit of background on these games. As I said, the first Five Nights at Freddy's game came out in 2014. You're an overnight security guard at a Chuck E. Cheese style pizzeria that includes life-sized animatronic characters. As the night progresses, the characters come to life and move around. You have to use your security cameras to spot them and avoid them attacking you. After this first game, there have been a total of nine games in the main FNAF series, with a few other smaller games. Thankfully, most of them seem to be around the same levels in terms of scariness, violence, language, and all that. So rather than review each individual game, I'm going to lump them all together. The only exception is that I'm not going to include Help Wanted. That's because this is a VR game, and everything I've read says the VR itself makes the game a lot scarier, but without actually having that game, I can't really comment on how much difference that makes. That was a lot of background, so let's dive into the ratings. I think cost is a good one to start with. There are a lot of games, and they almost all cost money. Most are about 8 bucks, and there's a bundle you can get if you want the first five games all at once. Security Breach is $40, which most reviewers agree is absurd. Excluding the VR, buying all the games individually would be more than $75. Of course, you don't have to buy them all, but you know how it is with your kids. They beat one game and immediately want the next one. I almost forgot about the merch. There is a tremendous amount of merch for this game. We don't even play the game that often, but for some reason we have tons of merch. The characters are just too cute, I guess I just can't help myself. So given the prices and the number of games, and especially that outrageous price tag on Security Breach, I'm setting this halfway up. We can quickly cover the sex rating. This game is not about sex or nudity. Creepy animatronic characters at a pizzeria are not sexy. This one gets a zero. Let's move on to language. I didn't find any profanity. Let me know in the comments if I missed any, since I didn't hear every single word. But just because there's no profanity doesn't necessarily mean we're good to go with language. The characters do say some pretty creepy things. Here are a few quotes from Ultimate Custom Night, which is one of the games that has a lot of character speaking parts. I will never let you leave. Did things get really hot in here, or is it just me? So there are some language concerns. But on the positive side, the FNAF games are all single player. I read about a mod you can use to play multiplayer, but I'm already reviewing like eight games here, so let's not add custom mods into the mix. So since there's no multiplayer, we don't have to worry about voice or text chat or any profanity there. Taking the creepiness of the language into account, I think this will go between a low and a medium. When it comes to the annoying rating, it really goes hand in hand with the violence and overall scariness. Most of the FNAF games are a mixture of really boring and really intense. For most of the games, you just sit inside the security room checking the cameras and listening for sounds. It's super boring. But it also kind of gives you a false sense of security, so when the jump scare comes, it really catches you off guard. When my kid first played this game, there were definitely some screams at the jump scares. But they were immediately followed by laughter, so the jump scares can be kind of annoying, but it's not a big deal in my opinion. I'm giving this a low rating. Let's get to the violence. This game is very similar in scariness to Poppy Playtime. I don't mean to upset the folks who are either on Team FNAF or Team Poppy Playtime. I'm not saying the games are the same, but they seem to be going for a similar effect, 
with their cute but creepy jump scare focused gameplay. For what it's worth, my kid says FNAF is scarier. He couldn't articulate why, but if I had to guess, I would say it's the music. They do a good job adding creepiness and suspense in the sounds. In any case, you can see what the visuals look like here on the screen. It's not particularly bloody or violent, it's just really creepy. I think this was the worst looking one that I saw. I'm going to set this halfway up. There are many, many video games with a lot more violence than this. All right, we made it through the ratings. I know some people get really upset about this toy-based horror genre and think it's utterly ruining our children. I guess I'm just not one of those people. Like I said before, there are loads of video games out there that are just awful for kids. Realistic first-person shooter games, gore, nudity, all of that. This game has none of that. Now I'm not saying you should stick your five-year-old in front of this game. If you do that, he'll never look at his teddy bear the same way again. But I think this game is okay for 10 and up. It's the same age rating I gave to Poppy Playtime, because again, I see these games as the same level of scary. My advice if you want to give this series a try is to start with FNAF 1. It's pretty cheap, but it's a good representation of what the game is about. Security Breach is a totally different style of game that doesn't really fit in with the rest, and I, I really don't recommend it. That's all I have for today. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree, and don't forget to subscribe to see what other games, shows, and channels are okay for your kids. See you next time.